Hi, I'm Shaheen Tusi, here on behalf of the Foundry, covering a male to female morphing effect in Nuke 12 with the Grip Warp Tracker and various other techniques. We have two plays available to us our Hero Mel plate, where we'll be applying our morphing effect to, and our target plate of our female actress. As we can see, our area of interest, where majority our morphing effect takes place, is significantly smaller than our plate, which is a 4K DCP. Let's optimize our canvas to improve productivity. This will help us to significantly reduce our disk I.O and utilize more of the CPU to the area of interest. At the same time, we can review the hero plate's movement against our target plate. For this, we will need a crop node and a merge node. Let's connect the crop node to our hero plate and set the X and the Y to 1500. Then relocate the bounding box to the area where the morphing effect takes place and finish by ticking the reformat. Then repeat this process to the female target plate. Now let's merge the hero and the target plate and set the over operation to average. As we can see, our target and hero plates are out of sync. We will need to track the hero and the target plate. Then use the tracking information to stabilize our target plate. Then realign to the hero plate. There are many ways to approach this with a nuke tracker and a planar tracker located in the roto node. But let us use the most interesting method by using the camera tracker node to create an object track in nuke. For this, we will need a garbage roto to isolate the hero on the target plate so the camera tracker can focus on the face. Now, connect the camera tracker to the hero plate, then connect the garbage roto to the mask input of the camera tracker node. In the camera tracker parameters, let's set our mask to mask invert alpha. This will tell our tracker only to track the face using a mask alpha. The reason why we need to choose invert alpha because the camera tracker node will presume the alpha is an ignore region. By inverting, we are saying to the camera tracker to ignore the wall. Now let's set our film back to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera with a width of 18.96 millimeters and a height of 10 millimeters. Go to the settings tab and let's increase the minimum length to 24 frame. Bring the tracker threshold to 0.8 and the tracking smoothness to 0.2 and finally the tracker consistency to 0.1. By increasing the frame range and the threshold, we're attempting to eliminate inconsistent track that may have been picked up with a reflection ping or a shadow of an object passing by. Tracking smoothness and consistency will help to reduce track that may have jitter in them, making sure the track are locally consistent. Feel free to refer to the Nuke manual for the greater detail. Now we can return to our main tab to track and solve the shot. Once the solve has finished, let's create a camera and hover your mouse over the viewer, then hit tab to enter the Nuke 3D space. We can see the landmarks created by the camera tracker resembling a face. This is a good indicator the track is working. Before testing our track, let's relocate the landmark to the world origin. To do this, we need to return back to the 2D space by hitting tab and select the track that is located on the chin of the subject. Then right click, scroll down to ground plane and set to origin. If we return to the 3D space, we can see that our points are set to the origin. Let's test our track by stabilizing a plate through the UV space via the scanline render node and create a new canvas for our effect. For this, we will need a Project 3D, a card, a Transform Geo, a Scanline Render, and a Reformat. Now connect your Project 3D to the scan, then connect your camera input to the solved camera, followed by the card and a Transform Geo. In the card parameters, untick image aspect. This will prevent the card from inheriting the scan's aspect ratio. Now scale and place the card using a transform geo to cover the area of interest, also allowing legroom for play. 
Now connect the Transform Geo to the Scanline Render node and set the Projection Mode into UV. In a Reformat node, we need to create a new format, so we don't have to work in the full 4K. In the Output Format drop-down menu, click on New and then set the name to Card UV and set the size to 1500 in both X and Y. When reviewing the projection, we see some distortion. This is because of some of the area of the face is in a negative and a positive parallax, and our card is a flat plane and does not match the typology of the face. To counter this, we need to cancel out the Y rotation and keep the card facing to the camera. Now connect Transform Geo's look input to the camera. In the Transformation Geo parameters, under the Look tab, untick X and Z rotation as they are not adding any distortion and we need to keep the subject as stabilized as much as we can. Once finished, then repeat this process for the target female plate. Now let's review and compare the results. We can see we are a lot closer to the target plate and have gone a little bit further by doing additional 2D tracks on our target plate and aligning it to the hero plate. Now we are ready to dive into the morphing effect. For this, we need a Smart Vector node, a Copy node, a Write node, and a Grid Warp Tracker node. Let's begin by connecting the Smart Vector to the Scanline Render node. When viewing the Smart Vector node, we notice there is no image. The Smart Vector information is stored in its own pre-designated channel. Let's bring the channels back to the main stream by using the Copy node. Connect the B input to the scanline render and the A input to the smart vector. In the copy parameters, set the layer copy to all and untick copy channel as the smart vector has no alpha information. Then let us connect the right node to the copy node and in the right node, let's set channels to all. Note, to reduce the disk footprint, I have set the EXR compression to DWAA. Then hit render and import the pre comped EXR back into Nuke. Let's connect both source and smart vector input of the Grip Warp Tracker to the pre comped plate. Let us scrub through the footage and find a hero frame to start with. In the case of this footage, I have already decided on 1035 is our hero frame. By default, the Grip Warp Tracker creates a grid of 5x5 which can be a little overwhelming to begin with. Let us reduce this to 3x3. Three three. Let us select the From Grid from the Grid Warp Tracker and begin moving the points to encompass the face. Once we have finished, we need to subdivide the face to better define the key points, which is the corner of the eyes, the nose and the mouth. Let us use the Insert Mode tool which offers a range of flexibility on creating the points. Once completed, copy the Grip Warp Tracker to our female target plate. Then begin relocating the points to match the target plate. Once we have both our target and hero plates ready, let us begin tracking from 1035 by clicking on the track forward icon located on the top. Once finished, return back to 1035 and track backwards. Then repeat this process to the female target plate. Now open both target and hero grip warp tracker nodes. Then in the target grip warp tracker, copy the animation from the from grid then paste it into the Hero Grip Warp Tracker to Grid. Close the Target Place Grip Warp Tracker, then connect the Hero Grip Warp Tracker destination input to the target plate. We also need to change the output type from Warp to Morph. Then link the Amount animation to the Mix knob. Let's place a key on 1013 at the value of 0. Then place a key at 1055 at the value of 1. Now flip book to see the results. We have now completed our morphing effect successfully with the Grip Warp Tracker in Nuke 12. 
Let us walk through the full composite to see what additional steps were taken to final the shot. As we can see, some additional grip warp has been made. For example, the hero plate was warped to the target plate, so the color and the lighting information can be transferred to our target plate by blurring both plates, unpre-multiplying and dividing and then re-multiplying back to the target plate. This allows for subtle light and color information to be transferred to our target plate for better blend. We have also favored the eyes of our target over the hero eyes to prevent ghosting. As our target's facial topology is more rounded than a hero, we have also favored her jawline and brought in early in additional morph effect. Our hero plate has a lot of facial hair. As we have pre-comped our smart vectors, we can use this information to paint a single frame of a clean face and use the vector distort to blend it back in using the merge node mix animation. We have copied the card and the transform geo from the hero plate and used the camera information with the scanline render to reverse the movement back to the 4K plate where a furnace film grain has been applied before merging back to the 4K DCP. And now for the final results. Thank you for watching our tutorial on the Grip Warp Tracker in Nuke 12. We hope you have enjoyed this session. Please feel free to write your questions on the Nuke forums on the Foundry website.